folks, this is Dr. Emily Sherning with American Resiliency here with an up-to-date climate outlook for all of our friends in Delaware. Did you know there are actual people who live in Delaware? It's true. The state actually exists. It's not just a legal fiction to support corporate entities. Also, the outlook for it is freaking bad. If you're new here, let's take a minute. I want to show you how I set the table, then we'll get rolling. If you want to check out any of the resources that I use, double check what I'm saying, go to the resources tab on my website, scroll down, they're all there. When we're talking about climate, I think it's important to note that we're not where we thought that we would be. It's important to note, and you can see evidence for it in this monthly update from the Copernicus Institute, which is the European Union's climate operation, that we continue to sit right around 1.5 C. And as we can see in this article from The Guardian, Many climate scientists are coming out to acknowledge that it looks more and more like we are off the models. The scientific community is also noting signs coming out of Antarctica indicating that we need to be taking higher end sea level rise quite seriously. It's very reasonable with us at 1.5 C for you to be thinking about how your home will change by 2 C. I'm showing you this information in the preamble here because I want you to be doing your own research. I want you to be able to confirm everything I report without too much work on your end. At American Resiliency, our basic source of information is the fifth national climate assessment data and figures. We use those for our projections because they represent the highest consensus climate science available. And you should know you paid for it. That was funded by taxpayer dollars. And so you deserve meaningful access to the information. However, as a matter of congressional mandate, there's no direct federal funding for communication to the public about the National Climate Assessment. That's why I founded American Resiliency. We're the only nonprofit focused on communicating this important information to the public, and we run on your donations. Let's go over to the NOAA Sea Level Rise Viewer. This is a powerful modeling tool with address-specific information that you can find on that resources tab of my website. Let's zoom in here for a minute. We've got an AR community member right up there in Pennsylvania, right above the curb of the border there. And I want you to see as we work the slider there, if you're in that particular little bend, you're locally much more resilient to sea level rise than other parts of the coast in this whole estuarial area between Delaware and Pennsylvania. So that's good news right there, bud. However, I'm sure that those of you who are interested in regional transportation issues will notice that this is looking suspiciously bad for the whole I-95, I-295, I-495 interchange. Let's look at that more in just a second. I want to give you a bird's eye view first, where we can see that at higher end sea level rise scenarios, we're looking at a lot of potential land loss in Delaware, a big coastal change and that's true even for more moderate. Look, there's the difference between three feet and today. Substantial key loss and substantial land loss throughout the state. Zooming back in on Wilmington and on those major roads. So here we are looking at that big I-95 interchange. And if we pull up even to three feet, we can see potential for saltwater incursion on many parts of this big highway interchange system. Building materials that aren't designed for saltwater exposure are particularly vulnerable. This is worth looking into more. And if we look at higher end sea level rise at 10 feet, we can see that this whole transportation hub looks really messed up, including the bridge right over here. This is a regional transportation nightmare. Taking another short look at the I-495, let's zoom in close. We can see that at three feet, we have one particular damage point potentially emerging in this low-lying area, but patching that is not going to be good enough. We can see that at 10 feet, there's extensive damage potential up and down the length of the highway. Then with the relative strength, the relative stability of the coastline there, you can see why engineers thought this was a cool place to put a cool coastal highway. But higher end sea level rise models, they are going to overtop what our infrastructure is designed to handle. I'm sorry to say that looking away from Wilmington, there are no coastal or estuarial population centers in Delaware that aren't projected to see serious impacts from sea level rise, whether we model three feet or 10. For all of these communities, we're looking at a need for retreat and a heavy lift. It looks bad, folks, for Delaware, and it looks crushingly expensive. If I were located in Delaware, 
thinking about how to respond at the household level to this stress, not just on my local community, but on the state's finances. I would start, I would take as a starting point, learning more about my local utilities. Especially, I would focus on my local sewage outflows and look at how big a lift these conditions are likely to be for your municipality. That'll help you decide if you want to stay or go, if you think you've got a reasonable chance of keeping the water safe to drink. That's a good step one. Let's look at some other factors, though, and help you evaluate your location. We're going to start with the heat. We're going to start looking at heat with an original AR visualization, which is the top line visualization on that resource tab. This is the wet bulb temperature risk visualizer, where we see how long is the time period projected to be every year where you could see potentially dangerous temperatures. You can see that for many areas, 1.5C to 2C, there's not a notable change. But unfortunately, in Delaware, we do see a notable change. We see that for every county in Delaware, we're projected to add at least a week of potentially dangerous temperatures. Checking out another American resiliency tool, the hot days tool, we can pan over like all of the AR tools and see how many additional days over 95 are projected for each of the counties. We're looking at a lot. We're looking at almost two weeks over 95 added to each part of Delaware. Another way to understand the heat is to look at figure 2.11 from the NCA5 and you can see that Delaware kind of stands out as having a big nighttime heat increase we're talking about maybe 20 additional days where the night doesn't cool below 70 every year as we approach 2C. Across all those factors, I would say that's a really notable hot season increase that kind of sticks out on the map to my mind. Actually, you've got a markedly high rate of change, which is very unfortunate. Let's look at changes to the winter now. Back in figure 2.11, we're looking at loss of cold days. This dark peach color means that you're going to lose about three weeks of your days at or below freezing. So we're talking about a shorter winter, but to look at the change in your winter intensity at your shift in winter lows, we're going to look over to figure 11.3, which is huge. I just want you to see where I'm going to get this snip from that we're going to throw up on the screen now. Here in this close-up from 11.3 with side-by-side, -side, we can see that in Delaware, you're looking at a fairly uniform 10-degree lift in winter lows throughout the state. That is also pretty high change. 10-degree lift is on the higher side nationally. Your winters are projected to be more like the winters we nowadays experience in the coasts of the Carolinas. Those are much milder winter. I would expect to see salt marsh coming up from the Carolinas all the way into this location. We should hope that it does. We should hope that it does to help stabilize the coastline as much as possible. And I'm sorry to see another high change factor stacking on the Delaware forecast here. Let's look at projected changes to precipitation. In figure 210 from the NCA5, we can see that Delaware is looking at about 5% more precipitation as we move forward towards 2C. So I looked over to figure 212 to see if that precipitation was going to come all in one big lump of water or if your rains are going to stay sort of normal. In figure 212 here, I look for repeating patterns on this complex figure, and I'm happy to say that Delaware does get one good card in their hand. Well, we expect rain intensity to increase in Delaware, like we expect it to increase almost everywhere else in the United States. You're not looking at a highlighted or intense risk on this factor. If you want to check out an area that is, look at the north of Maine, where you can see that on all three of those sub-figures, we've got pronounced darkness at the tip of northern Maine. Delaware, I'm sorry to say you're likely to experience basically a complete landscape transformation with this outlook. If you love the land here, it's going to need a lot of care. Delaware kind of sticks off into the water, right? So that means there's not such a strong migration path for living things of all kinds to reach into Delaware on their own. This is a landscape transformation that will really benefit from human assistance or you're only going to get the gnarliest invasives making their way in fast enough. I'm sorry to give you such challenging news. I suspect that Delaware will be facing absolutely crushing costs related to these changes. This is the type of sea level rise projection where, like we saw with New Jersey and coastal New York, many folks should expect serious utility impacts. This is the kind of sea level rise projection 
where I would be very concerned about near future impacts to sewage outflows. If it were me taking in this outlook for my home, unless I were deeply emotionally tied here, deeply relationally tied here, I might head inland a ways. The conditions projected here are survivable. And our AR community member right across the border in Pennsylvania, they're very similar for you, very survivable. But the level of change you could be facing if you go inland a little ways is so much lower. Let's go back to that wet bulb risk tool. So this is a good at a glance visualization focused on the change factor that's most likely to kill you. If you take a look for a moment, Look how close by there's territory where we don't expect an increase in wet bulb temperature risks from 1.5 C, where we are now, to 2 C. My grandpa used to say close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And this is a situation where I can tell you I wouldn't want to be close. I don't know that close is going to count. I would want to be inside the best margins that I could call. If you want to dig in here, I hope you go into it with open eyes. Survivable, yes, but very hard, with probable significant utility issues not too far away. You call it to your tastes, Delaware, and I'm sorry to give you bad news like this. I'm wishing you all the best. Let's get ready. Folks, before we run the credits, I want to give a quick shout out to a volunteer. You may have noticed that the thumbnails for the videos are looking a lot less like they were made by a mad scientist who really prefers all her media as a giant wall of text. That's because JP is helping me out. I wanted to show his YouTube channel here. If you like tabletop games, his content quality is amazing. It's much better than mine. And he's got a cool focus on family play and developmental needs. JP, my kids love your videos. He didn't ask me to do this, folks. But I honestly think there's a pretty decent Venn diagram overlap of AR folks and people who would be interested in this content. Now to the credits. Folks, thanks for watching. And I want to thank everyone in the AR community for your contributions that are keeping this nonprofit going. If you want to donate, there's a link on the About page of our YouTube channel or on the top bar of our website, www.americanresiliency.org. I'm very grateful to our donors, to our volunteers, to everyone spreading the word online, and especially to everyone doing the work on the ground. Thanks for getting ready with me and talk with you again soon.